everybody. You ever wonder when you start getting gas out of the pump into your car where that gas came from? Or do you think it just originated right here? Most people have no clue what it takes to get gas from the ground into your car. But when you get done watching this video, you're going to know. All right, let's take off. All right. It all starts with geology, and I am not going to pretend to know anything about the geology itself. Back in the old days, uh, they just punched holes wherever they thought there might be oil. If there was a seep of some sort, uh, like out by McKittrick and around Taft on the west side, uh, they'd start drilling holes near that. Then uh, geologists actually began getting involved and they started understanding that certain uh, geologic formations uh, were conducive to oil being there and later uh, petroleum engineers it, it got involved uh, it became actually petroleum engineering and these uh, people knew exactly what they were looking for and you'll notice there are a bunch of uh, pumping units here then off out there a few miles a mile or so there's nothing they know where this stuff is and they know where it isn't and uh, there aren't many wildcat holes anymore people don't guess anymore uh, exploration and drilling and recovery is very expensive so uh, they know what they're doing before they get there all right all right, this is a drilling rig. This particular one is one of the automated rigs. I call them a robot rig. This type of rig doesn't have a full uh, crew complement like the ones I worked on before I went to work for the railroad. Took a four-man crew to do the job that one man can do with this. Uh, but nevertheless, the uh, basic function and the principle is the same. They bring a drilling rig onto a location and they drill a hole down into the uh, zone where the oil is. And you can see that truck right there. Looks like it has a drill pipe on it. The working part of the rig where they pick the pipe up and everything is facing away from us so you can't see it. It's kind of a shame. The uh, drilling rig, they, like I said, they will drill a hole. Then they will do what's called, they'll run the casing, which uh, casing is a larger diameter steel pipe and that keeps the uh, the oil and the fluids contained within the well itself so it doesn't affect the ground that they're drilling through and the ground they're drilling through won't uh, affect the well. It can't cave in and uh, cause any problems. Uh, they'll cement that casing in place then they'll move the drilling rig off, move a production rig on, run the uh, tubing and the rods and then put a pumping unit on it if that's some some wells are free flowing not many of them around here are but uh, this is at at or near Bell Terrace and Union there the uh, Kern County Fairgrounds are right down there and a little interesting historical side note that big pumping unit that you see right there working back in 1974 uh, they had a Lloyd Melton drilling rig on that hole and I believe it was a redrill and uh, that well blew in and caught fire. And I'll put a picture of that rig while it was burning uh, in here. My dad worked on that rig. He was off duty at the time. But uh, yeah, that was uh, quite a big deal. But anyway, this is a drilling rig and now we'll move on to a production rig. Okay, this is a production rig, and what these are used for is when a drilling rig is finished drilling its well, they move a production rig in, and they run the tubing, which is usually about two and seven eighths, three inches in that area, could be bigger, I guess. Uh, they'll run the tubing down to the bottom of the well, and then uh, they'll run what is called uh, sucker rods down through the tubing. Sucker rods are just solid steel rods, and at the bottom of the sucker rods that the, they have a pump that uh, once they put the pumping unit on it as the uh, 
rods move up and down attached to the pumping unit, the pump has a ball valve in it. They may be more complicated than that now, but they had a ball valve that would open as the pump, the rods went up and then force the oil up and the pump would have seals around it that would cause the oil to push up through the tubing to the wellhead where you'll see on the uh, pumping unit part that I do where it comes out of the wellhead, out of the pipes there, through flow lines and into some sort of storage facility. And also what they do with production rigs, uh, called work over rigs in some cases, which is what this rig is doing. There's already a well drilled and a pumping unit on it. There's something wrong with the well, who knows? Maybe a hole was worn in the tubing or the pump quit working or whatever. They'll bring one of these in, they'll pull the, uh, so it looks right now, it looks like they have just the sucker rods out. Uh, yeah, there's some tubing over on the right side, the sucker rods you can see on the left side there, how they're bowed out, they're pretty flimsy. But um, they'll pull the pump out, replace it, uh, Fix, do whatever they need to do. Sometimes wells get sanded up and they'll go in and bale the sand out and uh, fix the well, get the pumping unit hooked back up and put it back to work and make an oil. All right, we'll go over uh, how pumping unit works really quick. That is an electric motor. As you can see, it's not very big. It is a 15 horsepower, 870 RPM AC motor. And uh, it operates that pumping unit. That's not a real big pumping unit. That's one of the medium sized ones. And the motor's connected by a belt to the gearbox, which turns these offset arms here that have the counterweights on them. They weight those to uh, counterweight the weight of the uh, rods going into the well and that is the walking beam that's the horse head i don't know if that's the official name for that that's just what i've always heard it referred to as it certainly looks like one and that is connected by a cable and a clamp to that piece right there that goes up and down of the well that is called a uh, polish rod and the polish rod is chromed, very smooth, goes through a seal right there that keeps the oil from coming out through it. And uh, the uh, polish rod is connected to what are called the sucker rods, which are the rods, they're just little skinny rods. Go down to the bottom of the well where they have a pump attached to them. Well, they used to use a, a ball that went up and down a lot that when, the, when it went up like that, the, it opened the valve and it closed it as it went down and forced the oil up out of the uh, wellhead there and through these pipes and into what's called a flow line and the flow lines will go to uh, generally a tank farm somewhere i don't know where they go around here but uh anyway that is how a pumping unit works all right Pumping units come in all different sizes. I left my pickup parked in front of uh, these two so you could see just how big these are. And these aren't the biggest ones. They have pumping units that are actually bigger than this, but these are pretty good size ones. And uh, they come in sizes from everything like this to these uh, oddball type here. I say oddball, these are actually pretty common in this area now, not by Taft. And again, I've got my pickup sitting there so you can see the comparative size of it. This one has this big belt that goes over rollers in the top up there. Has a motor on the other side. And uh, these have extremely long uh, travels, I guess you would call it, on the polish rod, like you saw on the uh, piece I did on how a pumping unit works. This is uh, still a pumping unit, but you can see that it has a much longer throw even than a large pumping unit like that. Pretty cool. To a medium sized one like this, to little bitty tiny ones like this, that's someone 
is used to make a mailbox holder. And yes, that is really an honest to God pumping unit that was working to pump a well one time. Okay, I wanted to come out here. This is the Kern River lease. This is a, where the first major oil discovery was in Bakersfield. The discovery well is actually about three miles that way. That is looking east. But to kind of get an idea of what a heavy producing oil field looks like. And it kind of peters out right here. It's, it's funny how the oil field works. There's a lot of oil and then all of a sudden it ends. They uh, are generally in pools or canals, but this is a huge field, a huge producing field. And it has been producing since the 1890s. Another thing I wanted to uh, bring up while we're here, up there, those are boilers. Now I don't know, these things here may be some modern kind of boiler, I don't know. But uh, they use those boilers to generate steam that they then inject into wells. The uh, oil here is very heavy. My dad, back in the early 60s, when I was little, my dad worked out here for Shell Oil and they were just starting to do, it's called steam flooding. And he was telling me that they would have a well that was only producing two or three barrels a day and they would uh, pump the steam into it and they could get it over a hundred barrels a day and uh, some more than that. So it was a huge benefit. And that again was called the steam flood. This is China grade loop. As we turn here, you'll see these trees to the right. That is where the uh, Chevron oil uh, employees recreational facility used to be. There was a swimming pool, a recreation hall. You could go in there and play games. Uh, there was, I believe there might have even been a tennis court there. Uh, my stepmom's dad retired from Chevron. He worked at the refinery over there on the Oil City branch. And uh, we used to go there when I was in high school, go swim and stuff. I don't know when they closed that. I don't remember. But uh, it was a pretty neat facility. But as you can see, pumping units everywhere. These were all originally, not all these you see, but uh, the original wells out here were all uh, very shallow. Most of them less than a thousand feet, but as the years went by, they were able to come up with better technology, start drilling some deeper wells, and then, uh, I don't know, the last 30 years or so, they really went to town. Panorama Bluffs off to the right there. And right down here, you can go watch my uh, the piece I did on the Oil City branch. It was one of the first videos that I did. I actually shot that for Facebook, so it's in the wrong format, but it is on here. And uh, right about here is where the old kind of still see the little hump here that's where the old uh, branch line the uh, Treadwell district went off up Sacramento Gulch off to the left up there the Beardsley Canal off to the right there. The second oldest canal in Bakersfield. Mountain Road into 
discovery well is right there. Okay, you can see the uh, plaque there to the left, the historical marker, the little flat board enclosed by the yellow steel bars. That is the discovery well of the Kern River oil field, and that was actually dug by hand, and that is what kicked off everything you just saw me drive by. All right, we'll drive down here a little further. Now you can see that um, almost all of these pumping units in this older part of the field are all the smaller ones, and this these that indicates shallower wells. This is the original part of the Kern River lease and uh, you can see it's actually got a lot of uh, wells too not nearly as many as back where we drove through all ago and then right about here the bottom of this hill it just kind of peters out I thought that I would come up here and give an overview of what that all looked like from above we're up on the uh, Panorama Bluffs overlooking the Kern River Lease. And you can see how extensive that field is. Uh, it goes from as far to the right around that hill as you can see. Over to where those tanks are. And then all the way to the tops of those hills back there. It's a pretty big lease, pretty big oil field, and it's not even nearly the biggest one in this area. All right, uh, come here to this tank farm here. Natural gas blowing off over there. You can smell it already. And that is why there's absolutely no smoking around these facilities. Uh, natural gas is a byproduct of the oil process. It, almost all wells have natural gas in them even if they're just oil wells but uh, you can see all these pumping units around here I'm sure that not all of them flow into this but you can see these pipes that come in these are the flow lines they bring uh, oil from the pumps into this storage facility and then there are other pipelines that take it away from this storage facility pump it to wherever they, it gets pumped to. Sometimes they bring trucks in. They can uh, load uh, tanker trucks up here if they need to. And uh, this is actually a pretty small tank farm. Some are smaller, but uh, some are a lot uh, bigger. But this is a tank farm. Hey, we are at the San Joaquin Refinery on Standard Street in Bakersfield. And uh, that is the one of the spurs off of the Minkler Southern. I will link the piece I did on the Minkler Southern in the description below. But uh, this isn't a huge refinery, but it's productive. It's been here for a long time. And I am not completely conversant with the way refineries work. I have a rudimentary understanding of it. Uh, Oil is uh, delivered to these refineries by pipelines and stored in these tanks around here or delivered by truck into uh, whatever storage facilities has. But I know that uh, oil is uh, made up of chains of, chemically, of chains of hydrocarbons. And when they start to refine this, uh, these chains are they're cracked and that changes the uh, chemical properties of uh, the oil and they do whatever they do with it. They make the different grades of gasoline and these towers here, I don't recall what those are called, but uh, the oil is fed into the bottom of it and heated and as it heats up, the uh, heavier uh, Parts of the oil that they use to make uh, motor oil and fuel oil, things like that, are at the bottom. The lighter the oil gets as it is heated and rises to the top, it, they use it for different things. And uh, 
up at the top are the gases like propane, butane, things like that. Uh, again, I'm not 100% conversant. I'm just what I've read and seen about how refineries work and what they do at refineries. That's a cooling tower there. Doesn't appear to be in operation. And once they do uh, finish producing whatever they produce, they have tanks they store the finished product in. And as you can see, a lot of these tanks are different colors. And I'm told that different products are stored in different color tanks. But anyway, that is a very, very simplified uh, explanation of what they do at refineries with the oil. One other aspect of uh, the refining of oil is uh, liquefied petroleum gas. You can see that uh, truck down there pulling out of the plant. And uh, this, unlike the uh, refinery in the uh, earlier segment, this refinery is dedicated to liquefied petroleum gas. Uh, that Those towers there, you'll see that they don't have the uh, different levels like the ones that the uh, earlier refinery had because this is a dedicated LPG plant. It only makes one product. They pull the gas off after they've uh, taken it from the petroleum, compress it, and store it in those large spherical tanks. They use spherical tanks because they can withstand much greater pressures than can uh, standard uh, type tanks. And then that uh, is transferred to other facilities through pipelines, trucks like the one you saw pulling out, and through these through rail cars over there. The Burlington Northern Santa Fe actually has a uh, branch line, a spur track that goes off their main line about uh, you know, a couple miles distant. And uh, they bring these LPG trains out of the here out of here and you see these uh, LPG cars on the railroad out there. If you've never seen the uh, footage of the LPG car that exploded, I believe it was in Arizona. It's been quite a while, it's been about 20 years ago, but there's footage of it and it blows one of those cars about a half a mile away. Uh, you should uh, YouTube that and watch that, see how dangerous this stuff can be if uh, something goes wrong. But anyway, this is an LPG facility. Moved out to the Kern Oil and Refining Company. This is out Panama Lane and Highway 184, Wheat Patch Highway. Uh, if you saw my piece, if you saw the piece that I did on the uh, history of the Arvin branch, uh, this is the refinery that I hit on briefly there. And uh, this is uh, one of the racks here with the uh, tanker trucks come in, get filled up, and go to gas stations and fill the gas stations up so you can go to the gas station and fill your car up. And then once those trucks leave the refinery, they come here to your local neighborhood gas station. And uh, this driver here is checking the level of the underground fuel tanks, see how much he needs to put from his truck into the ground. He's got his hose plugged into his tank. I've already talked to him about what we're doing here. He's okay with that. And he's gonna give the gas station the gas it needs so it can give you the gas it needs. All right, move on to the last step. takes to get gas from the ground to the pump. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it took me a long time to shoot it, so I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, keep shooting me ideas. Uh, drop them in the comments below. Shoot me an email at motorpoet 59 at gmail.com. Like, share, subscribe. Click on the bell if you want to be notified of future content. We'll see you all later.